Hi there guys, how's it going? I get asked about drums and bass more than anything when I make a demo and I wanted to explain things as simply and as quickly as I could. Things like drums can really get very convoluted and complicated. You can split them all into individual tracks and mix them individually, but I used to do that. And uh, But with these new drum packages like Perfect Drums, Superior Drummer and those great softwares that have a premix kit out the box. You really don't need to do that, but I do tweak them. Um, so here's the last demo I did for Crunchman. Very sort of simple setup, really. I always use Perfect Drums by Naughty Seal. And the best thing you can spend your money on, really, if you can't record drums, is get a decent premium drum package like this. It's just got a nice selection of loads of, you know, very expensive drums that I would never have access to. You know, loads of different kicks, loads of different snares, and just loads of different cymbals and toms. And within this, you can add your own samples. I currently don't do that because I love what they offer anyway. So I just use what they have. And it's got a built-in mixer. Most of these softwares, even the free ones like MT Power Drum Kit, have some sort of mixer in there so you can alter the levels within the plugin. And you can alter things like, you know, room ambience, reverb. And the cool thing about uh, Perfect Drums has this sort of super easy effects knob, which you can turn up and down. So you can go from a totally dry, natural sound to a more of a processed, punchy sound. So currently on this snare that I'm using, this Ludwig snare, I've got it cranked up to full. So if you want to get a drum kit package, I recommend Perfect Drums. It's just really, really good. EQ wise, honestly, I could just have this off and it would work great. It sounds great out the box and it's supposed to sound great out the box. But if you want to sort of make it sound a little bit more unique and to sort of fine tune it, especially for metal, it's nice to take out some frequencies. Uh, I've taken out a little bit of 400, takes out some of the kind of sort of boxy feel. And uh, taking out some 200, a little bit of cutting the low mids just to make it sort of a bit tighter. And I've sort of taken out a little bit of the super lows, everything below about 45, because the kick drum is very important for metal. You want it to really sit in the right spot and you don't want it to interrupt the bass guitar. And uh, I'll get into the bass. Uh, first of all, you need a decent bass, you know, new strings and all that. That goes without saying, really. I've got a Squire Jag bass. It's fairly cheap. It's like a 200 pound bass, which is like, you know, sort of a $300 bass. Um, it sounds really decent. It's quite low output pickups, but when you put it through a chain like this, it doesn't really matter about the output of the pickups as long as they sound decent. So what I'm using is, it's a totally free plugin. This is BOD or BOD by TSE Audio. It's, uh, it's a Sansamp copy, basically. These are the settings I use. The drive's almost on full. When you're doing metal bass, you don't really want a totally dry bass sound. You need to drive it a little bit to have any sort of presence in the mix. Otherwise it'll have that sort of bumpy sound and you really want it to meld and gel with the guitars. And the best way to do that is to drive it. Uh, and then I have a bit of re-EQ, you know, I'm just scooping it like crazy at around 200, 500 to really keep it out of the way of the guitars because the guitars exist sort of here. And obviously I've left a lot of the low end in, you know, it took, it took a little bit out of it out, but not much. And then I've got sort of a shelf here at the sort of 5k, I'm not taking off all the highs. You can do a low pass to about 5k and that'll have the similar sort of effect, but I really like how this sounds at the moment. And then I've got the recomp. This really isn't doing much for the super heavy hits I'm doing. It, it clamps down on them a little bit, but uh, say if you're going straight in from, you know, a Sansamp or some other sort of DI or something outside of Reaper and you're going in, this driving rock bass preset is really good. Um, so if you're just going straight in, that's a great preset to use. And I've still got it on here just to sort of catch some of the more heavy hits. Something I've been doing recently is doing a full performance and then copying that exact performance and putting it below. And on this track, this is the, com this is completely the same performance. I do that thing, which everyone sort of does where they, uh, they EQ it like you would a guitar. So what I've got here, Mocha Fix Audio, no amp. This 
is just a straight up guitar sans amp copy. So a sans amp, basically you go into it and it's a driver and an amp modeler and a cab modeler at the same time, but made super easy. These are the settings I use. Basically it just destroys the bass, has a nice sort of distortion to it, and it works really well. And I'd EQ it exactly how I would a guitar. So, you know, I've got a high pass, a little, a little bit more of a severe high pass up to, you know, 170-ish, cutting out some low mids, and then high pass into about 7K. So this second track here just has no low end, uh, not much high end, and it's mostly it exists where the guitar, where a guitar would. And this is panned straight up the middle. And then compression, I've got the ro drive and rock bass preset. Um, and that's sort of catching a couple of the uh, the heavy hits. The main bass track is at minus six. And then the distorted bass track, I bring up under it and that's at minus 16. So, you know, it's, it's fairly low in the mix, but it's how it gives the bass a lot of presence. So I'll just let you see how that sounds. And I'll just uh, mute the drums so you can hear the bass tracks by themselves. And I'll just turn off the distorted signal. This is just the bod by itself. So. On its own, that's a pretty raunchy, overdriven sound. And I did use that for a long time, just that sort of, you know, driven sans amp sound. It really does work. But I was missing a little bit of that presence and wall of sound punchy in the face sort of thing. So when you put the two together, you just get this monstrous bass tone with loads of low end. So guys, I hope that helps. This full track is the Crunchman demo by Nalex. It's on my channel. Check it out. I'll link it below. I'll link some of the other plugins below as well. Cheers for watching. <laughs>